Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel. Welcome to a race review video of my GTWS manufacturer's race for this exhibition season. It's round one, it's group three cars and it is Deep Forest Raceway in reverse. This was my second attempt at the race. I did the first race at 10 o'clock in the morning. This was the 7pm slot. The first race didn't go particularly well. If you're a channel member, you can have access to watching the full race of that if you like. Uh, but let's just say we were uh, taken out at the first corner. So as we kind of run through the field here, just to set the scene, you can see who's on the grid, what cars are on the grid. Uh, race details are at the top there, tyres at times 4, fuels at times 3. We had the racing soft and the racing hard tyres, both available and both of which were mandatory. The soft tyres on the Jaguar that we were on, we knew we could do 14 laps if it necessary, maybe 15 if we really had to, but yeah, more looking to sort of pit around about lap 5 or 6. Starting on the hard tyres, disastrous qualifying as we tend to have, we think we uh, got a penalty halfway through our first lap and then had to go back to the pits to, because the penalty is served on the start finish straight and then actually only had the time to do one lap which wasn't very good and we started down in P14 but we uh, have made a one position already and obviously with these new close rolling starts the cars are nice and close together we're going to make up another position on the BMW taking a tighter line out of the tight right hander and that's going to move us up into P11 so positive start here in the Jaguar starting on the hard tyres as you would expect being so far back down the grid uh, we're going to sort of as I said I knew from a little bit of testing and from the previous race that 30 laps are pretty comfortable in the Jaguar, 40 laps if necessary and if we wanted to do really extreme kind of strategy we could go for 15 laps on the soft tyres maybe pitting at the end of lap 3 but coming into the last corner here there's going to be an almighty instant, not entirely sure what happened. Three cars go off, one car gets significantly slowed down, we chose the right side by going to the left hand side and we make up four positions and we went from P14 up to P7 in the space of a lap so all the luck was on our side over that first lap, we negotiated it very nicely indeed and we are up into P7, we are a little bit astray of the cars in front due to the fact, well obviously we've made up seven positions so obviously that gap would have been there initially anyway. All in all, you cannot complain at that for a start. Jumping forward here to lap three. Now Dan Robble, the Supra behind us, had caught up in that instant at the end of lap one and was quite clearly on soft tyres because I think they were about over three seconds behind me after that had occurred and at the speed they were catching me, I was under no doubts whatsoever that that driver was in soft tyres. So. But it's still being so early in the race and you know we can't complain at the start we've had I put up zero resistance to Dan here in the Supra and I was suspecting that I was possibly going to come across this driver at some point later in the race the way the strategies were likely to unfold and I was hoping that by not making their life too difficult they may well return the favour later on in the race now that remains to be seen so do stick with me to see if that materialises another driver is off the track here and well two drivers off the track here again not sure what's happened but it's to our benefit we make up two positions go from p8 to p6 not a great uh, sort of rejoin to the track there from the mazda i might add no sort of parking the car on the apex there but luckily the ghosting system did its job they didn't unghost in the most unfortunate circumstances as it very often seems to happen to me and we managed to keep up the progress. Come to the end of lap 6 here, it was time for me to come into the pits. I looked at the mini map and I could see a gap behind all the cars that were behind me. I was quite hopeful we should be able to kind of come into the, that gap of maybe about 3 or 4 seconds in front of us and the kind of thinking was that by the time we catch the cars in front of us we should uh, see those cars start to peel off into the pit lane. Now the pit loss here, very very short at Deep Forest Raceway only around about 15 to 16 seconds as we emerge from the pits. Our kind of thought process, our plan seemed to be unfolding quite nicely with that gap in front of us around about 3 seconds. Now there is a yellow flag out there again, not entirely sure what happened. It kind of was the theme for this race. I don't think people were particularly familiar with the track. I certainly wasn't uh, going into this round. I don't think I'd even turned a lap up until 
uh, the day before the actual race. Seems a bit of an odd track when you first get into it, but as you kind of start racking the laps up, you start to get a little bit of a flow for it. Very, very technical track, very, very easy to make a mistake. Uh, and yeah, that actually did start to grow on me quite considerably as the, the day unfolded again. You're just seeing the track there catching some more folk out and other two cars off the track again. Who knows what happened, but yeah, just uh, very, very easy to make a mistake around here. Particularly if you try to go side by side with another car through this sector here, then it generally did end in disaster from what I've seen over the course of the day. So coming to the end of our uh, lap here, our out lap, I was kind of really hoping that these two cars were going to peel off into the pit lane, but for some reason they didn't. For me, a lot of people were doing too many laps on the hard tyres. Now, I know I'm pretty good at looking after the tyres, and I generally do manage to get more laps out of the softs than most drivers, but yeah, I was kind of getting, oh, what are you guys still doing out? Why have you not pitted? It's lap eight. Why are you getting so far into the race on the hard tyres? Managed to negotiate our way through the Nissan GTR there. The BMW though makes a mistake, and this was just not what we needed. This was not part of the strategy. It was not part of the plan. But then we do manage to then just use the superior grip of the soft tyres to get up by the BMW into that section there. But already cost us probably two seconds uh, being stuck behind those two drivers, which was not ideal. But that's just the nature of racing, sometimes things don't go quite according to plan. Now we've made a big jump forward here to lap 15, because basically from about lap 9 to lap 14, I was pretty much on my own. Uh, pace was consistent, if not spectacular, and as suspected, as the strategies unfolded, uh, Dan Robble in the Supra, who we'd let past a little bit earlier on uh, in the race, lap 3, has now moved from soft tyres onto hard tyres and the rules have been reversed that we've now got the better tyres and it's up to us to see if we can now get back past this Supra. Now it's lap 16, we're in the latter stages of the race and well I was kind of hoping that maybe Dan wouldn't make my life too difficult, he might remember what happened on lap 3 and he might just kind of not quite wave me by but certainly not fight it too hard but I completely understand why he didn't. We are, as I said, in the latter stages of the race and you know it's all about trying to kind of fight for positions at this point but I was wary of the cars behind me there was two cars behind me who were on soft tyres as well so I was wary if we started fighting really hard that those two guys may get back into the fight and yeah given that we'd started P14 P6 certainly wouldn't have been a bad result but yeah Dan was going to fight this one quite hard and as he probably should uh, but the big problem we had here wasn't so much that we couldn't get past the Supra is that the fact they had the slipstream from the BRZ in front so we had a little bit of a look into turn one or the hairpin not entirely sure about it be turn one but yeah the move wasn't quite on that was just a look we gave Dan a little bit of a bump draft I thought you know what if I give him a bump draft maybe these two will go alongside into this corner which is exactly what happened and we can maybe sneak up the inside we got a little bit of oversteer though remember these tyres are now 10 laps old so certainly starting to not quite give the ultimate grip that they would at the beginning of the stint but definitely still better than the hard tyres in front obviously we were quite easily able to to follow the Supra despite the dirt air even at this point but yeah all I could see at this point though the more we're fighting the more we're trying to jink and look for the move as the cars catched up behind so we go for a little bit of a optimistic overtake here Dan sees it coming we keep a nice tight line and we exit the corner there, we got a little tiny bit of oversteer there which is probably going to be costly because it just allowed that slipstream to the car to open up in front Dan's got the slipstream behind me, we go defensive down the straight, we're going to try and take the shortest possible line here a little bit of contact there and I thought we had the move here made to be honest I knew I was aware of the Supra on the inside but then it just appeared out of nowhere there I think that was a little bit wild on Dan's part to be honest with you, he could quite easily have taken me out we're going to try and get a better exit here, we do get a better exit, we move to the right hand side and oh, I kind of felt like Dan had kind of reacted to my move there and we decided to bump them, we're in the slipstream again, we're going to try and go down the outside I was a little bit annoyed at that point though folks, I do believe if Dan hadn't moved we'd have got the inside for this corner here we do try to outbreak round the outside here but the tyres just aren't quite up for that we did break a little bit late, didn't execute the move very well at all on to the second part of the last lap now i think our last opportunity is gone the tires are really starting to struggle we've got the dirty air to contend with there was still an opportunity down into the last corner if we could get through the last sector 
uh, nice and cleanly but again the dirty air was starting to affect the car here you can just see we're starting to drop behind and look how close the car behind has got to us they were four seconds behind us at one point and that gap has come down to under a second nearly half a second just over half a second due to the fight and so yeah disappointed we were quite able to get past the Supra but you know having started in P14 as a GTWS race you know you're in here with a complete field of A plus drivers everybody should know what they're doing I can't complain too much about going from P14 to P6 so that was going to be 207 points and this was the last split that I was able to do and I don't think I would have went again anyway to be perfectly honest with you I didn't have great pace around here, the consistency was good, we were good on the tyres, we were able to manage the fuel, the Jaguar had to do a little bit of fuel saving over the course of the race as well, which I'm not sure was quite the case for a lot of the cars out there from what I could see, but overall, all in all, very happy with the performance here in terms of the drive, in terms of consistency, uh, not making any mistakes, making the right decisions and going from P14 to P6 is never a bad thing. Let's take a look at this last lap again with Dan coming into the hairpin here. Oh, you know, we were lucky there I think because if he clipped our car in the slightest little bit of way, we were into the barrier probably losing at least two positions. Coming out the hairpin here, we did get the better exit, we moved to the right hand side. Oh, did Robbo move? Did he react to my move? At the time, I felt he had kind of reacted to my uh, attempt to go to the right-hand side because that would have given us the inside for this corner and I think with the better tyres, we would have easily been able to sort of completely move it. We were forced to the outside. I had to attempt it on the outside uh, and, yeah, just wasn't quite there. Probably didn't execute that move very well, as I said. But all in all, yeah, good battle with uh, Dan Robbo. Uh, as I said, I wasn't particularly happy with that move at the time, but it is racing, it was hard racing, it's the last lap, of course drivers are going to fight for that position, and, you know, as I said, can I really complain too much going from P14 to P6, but I'll leave it there, hopefully you've enjoyed this race review, uh, don't do too many of these kind of videos on the channel, because, to be honest with you, they don't actually perform that well, so if you listen to this bit here, Thank you very much for watching. Please hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. And I shall catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.